Duke from Russell Investments. The head economist for North America, Mike Duker, joins us from Seattle. Mike has um, insight into the Fed. He was the assistant vice president at the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. Uh, good to have you back once again. Mike, uh, are you going to be watching Obama's speech, and what are you closely monitoring for? Oh, uh, yes, I'll be looking to see whether they go through with the extension of the payroll tax cut. There was some discussion that the payroll tax cut would be extended to the business contribution also. So far, they've cut 2 percent from the employee contribution, and there's some discussion that they would add to that a 2 percent, a 2 percent reduction to the employer contribution as well. So that would sort of double the incentive to add workers and also continue to add uh, take-home pay to people's paychecks. Yeah, is this enough, do you think, to spur on the U.S. economy to try to create jobs, or do you think that there needs to be some help as well from the central bank? Well, it's a start, but of course the $300 billion total package is not going to do it all. Uh, what the U.S. economy really needs right now is confidence. Uh, we need some resolution in Europe, the, the idea that Europe is not going to lead the world into a, a global financial crisis. We need that confidence. We also need confidence that the Federal Reserve is not going to lead us into deflation, that they're going to do enough quantitative easing to prevent deflation. Um, you know, my view has been that if the 10-year Treasury yield were to linger at these levels below two and a quarter percent for, say, two months, that that would lead to a third round of quantitative easing. And the whole purpose of that would be to convince people that deflation and economic stagnation scenarios are off the table, or that the Fed will prevent that, and uh, that should actually boost the long-term interest rate if that confidence uh, is restored. Okay, well, we also heard from the Federal Reserve President, uh, Charles Evans, uh, basically echoing what we heard from Paul Krugman, of course, the Nobel Prize winning economist, saying the U.S. government, the Federal Reserve, needs to throw the kitchen sink right now to boost growth and uh, spur on the economy. Yes, it's very interesting that Charles Evans has really spoken out at this point because he, at this point, is really the Anthony Kennedy of the Federal Reserve. Anthony Kennedy is the swing voter on the U.S. Supreme Court, and Charles Evans has really become the swing voter on the Federal Reserve. Of course, we had three dissents at the last meeting from the more hawkish members, but Charles Evans has stepped forward as the swing voter on the Federal Reserve Board on the FOMC uh -huh. in order to speak out in favor of more quantitative easing to get this economy moving again. Okay, well, do you think, Mike, that the, the markets have already priced in QE3? Uh, they've priced in the possibility, but you know today's bounce in the stock market was really due to the German constitutional court decision today that gives the go-ahead for Germany to help bail out some of these peripheral European countries. That's what today's bounce was about. Uh, I'm sure the markets have priced in some, you know, a, an increased probability of QE3, but it remains to be seen whether that's necessary. If enough confidence comes back alone from uh, lessened concerns about Europe, that alone should mm -hmm. boost the, the U.S. 10-year Treasury yield to the point where QE3 might not be necessary. But I'm sure the Federal Reserve will be on, on standby if needed. Right. Now, your view is that the probability of recession in the next six months is only maybe 20 to 25 percent. How did you come up with that? Oh, I run a model that, that actually gives a recession probability, and that's what my model is saying right now. So, you know, you might say, well, what's the model missing? It's missing, perhaps, the threat from Europe. But, again, you sort of have to take the Winston Churchill approach and say, we're going to have to count on Germany to do the right thing after Germany ha has exhausted all other possibilities. And that right thing is that Germany is going to have to kick in a lot of money into, through the ECB and also through the EFSF fund in Europe to mm -hmm. provide below interest rate lending to these peripheral countries. They need, they need not only guaranteed lending, they need below yeah. market interest rate loans. And I think that's what you already okay. saw with the ECB. Uh, when the ECB bought some Italian and Spanish bonds, that really helped bring down the yields in both Spain and in Italy. Okay, so a probability of recession in the next six months, 20 to 25 percent. Mike, thank you for your insights. Uh, Mike Duker joining us uh, from Seattle, Washington, and Russell Investments. He's the chief North American economist.